What is up, guys? So on this episode, we are we have the flame machine, the bruised banana, up in the air right now. It's on the hoist, as you can see, and I have a pilot bearing on my finger here because we we're putting the clutch in. So I got the ACT clutch kit over here, and I'm just working on the flywheel right now. As you see, I just pressed out the bearing, so I want to show you guys that process. It's really, really easy. As long as you can be resourceful, you don't really need any special tools. And let's just dive right into it, you guys, because we got a lot to cover. All right, so we're gonna be reusing the stock AP1 flywheel. And this is a actually very light flywheel to begin with. So there's not much benefit to going any lighter. It's only like 14 pounds or something ridiculous. And a lot of lightweight flywheels are like 10 pounds. So it's really not a whole lot of benefits and 14 pounds is plenty light. But we have the car up there. In the last video, I showed you guys we fully cleaned the transmission. So we degreased it and it's looking amazing, honestly. Like that thing looks cherry. So we got that and I just popped out the old bearing, the pilot bearing. So what I wanted to show you guys is how to get it out. So obviously it goes in this way and you can see that it's pressed in from this direction that it has that lip that stops on. So what you wanna do is just grab yourself a socket and you're gonna put it out from the other direction. So I found a socket that fit perfectly inside that lip so that I could drive it out the opposite way. So I had this thing flipped over, I put this on top of it, and you can use a hammer, but I happen to still have this slide hammer from the bodywork we we're using. I just placed that on there, and honestly, two wax and this thing fell out. So even though, um, you know, if you were gonna try to reuse this bearing, you'd probably have to do it a different way, but because we're replacing it, it doesn't really matter how it comes out as long as it comes out. So that's the way it fit on there it was driving it on the seal surface so like i said if you're trying to preserve the bearing it's definitely not going to preserve it but as far as a method to get it out that definitely works now when we're putting this bearing back in we definitely don't want to use the same socket because if you use that on top of there and pressed that seal in then you're going to end up with a damaged bearing like this one that we just popped out so what you're going to do is find yourself a socket that is the same size as this outer race, so you can press on that. So we'll have to go through our collection of sockets and see which one might fit that bill. Nope. We'll move along, maybe a one inch one, doesn't matter if it's metric or imperial. Closer, but still not quite there. So we'll kind of have to mess around with a little bit and see what we can come up with, but that's essentially what we gotta do is find, this one's gonna be way too big. Yeah, find a socket that we can pop that in with and then we'll just tap it straight down. But you don't necessarily need a socket. What we're gonna do instead is just do the tried and true method of just tapping ever so gently in a circular motion and keeping an eye out for if there's any high spots and whenever you see it kind of lift up and there's a high spot, you wanna drive on the high spot so that you're driving it in straight. So we're gonna go ahead, tap this in and get it seated. And just like that, our pilot bearing is in, like I said, just gently tapping on it in a circular motion and aiming for this outer race portion. You're not gonna do any damage and you'll know when it's fully seated because when you flip it over and up, you will see right there against that lip that it is all the way in and facing this way, like touching on that lip there. It can't go any further. So that is done. Now we can mount the flywheel and we can start prepping the engine side and we can put the you know the rest of the clutch components on but let's go ahead and get that flywheel up there and get it mounted also. so we have the flywheel mounted but i'm going to show you guys a little trick because we're about to tighten the flywheel bolts 94 foot pounds but when you try tightening it obviously the flywheel moves so if you get a wrench like this and put it in one of your transmission bolts and then you grab one of your pressure plate bolts, like so. Thread it in decently. You don't wanna to go too skimpy because you could, if you just do like one, one thread, you might end up cross-threading something, but you turn it like so, and all of a sudden now you can actually tighten your bolts. So you can do this both with the flywheel and with the pressure plate afterwards, but it's kind of a neat little trick that you can use, so. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down, we'll torque them, and then we can start putting our clutch and pressure plate on here. So I'm just getting some of the clutch stuff ready to go, taking it out of the packaging. Got some brake cleaner here as well, because you will need to note that somewhere on here, it does say that these faces are coated. I think it's right here. 
So it says you must clean it with solvent because they have an oil on it so that it doesn't rust. So definitely have to clean this. We're gonna clean the flywheel. We also have to use a little bit of this grease that they give us, high temp grease, to put it on the splines that are on the transmission. So we got a few things to lubricate here and um, we're gonna get it all prepped up and ready to go, but pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I'm gonna get it all out of the packaging and kind of show you guys what I'm doing. First up, I'm gonna clean this surface. So we got some brake clean. We'll get this, I can aim it properly. Give this a nice healthy rinse so that all the oil is gone off of it. So get this one clean. So that's that. We have a nice clean clutch face so that we don't have any slippage. Next one, I'm gonna get one more clean paper towel here. Even though we've already done it, we'll do it once again since we've been touching it. We're gonna go ahead and spray this one off. And we'll dry the face here. So we've got clean here also. Next up, we've got this grease here. So we have the super high temperature grease. You can see 2800 degree grease. So I think that'll work for what we want to do. It says Swiss ceramic formula. So there's some really expensive greases you guys can get. I know Honda has a special grease, but this one, 2800 degrees Fahrenheit, I think will be okay. So we're going to put a little bit of grease on the spline, a little bit of grease on this throw out bearing um, guide here so that the throw out bearing can go back and forth, no problem. And pretty much that's most of the two contact points. We'll probably put a little bit in here where it pivots. Um, but what we're gonna do is put a little bit of grease on these splines, take that clutch disc over there and just pass it over top and wipe off any excess grease. Cause the last thing you wanna do is put grease on here, put your clutch all together and then have grease sling all over and go on the clutch faces. And then you pretty much need a new clutch again. So we're gonna do that process and then we can start putting stuff together. So that's it guys. We put the throw out bearing on here. We still have to take it off, mind you, but I just wanted to put it on there just so all the grease, any excess grease would be slid off and so it's not gonna be hanging, a big blob of it, and then <clears throat> go flying. Same thing with the clutch disc. Put it on, check that there's no big blobs hanging on the end of here, but we're good to go, you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and reassemble or assemble the clutch with the pressure plate, throw out bearing, all that, and then we can get ready to slide this transmission on. So we have everything assembled and you guys saw that I did a crisscross pattern on the bolts for the pressure plate, which you want to do. And the bolts on the flywheel, those were a 17 head um, bolts. And also these ones are a 10 millimeter bolt. And we ended up doing 94 foot pounds crisscross on the flywheel. And then we did 19 foot pounds on these bolts here. So we got these all tight. And we're gonna go ahead and install the transmission. We've got our clutch alignment tool in here, which we can now pull out. So that's good. We got our throw out bearing here. And the way this one works is the fork's gonna go on. So transmission's back there. We're gonna go ahead and get it on that transmission jack, get it lined up and we'll pop it on. All right, so transmission is in, we hung it. I mean, really not a whole lot to see. All we did was just line it up with the dowels, slide it forward, we sucked it in with a couple bolts, just making sure that it was lining up and the splines are going in. No big deal. Now, we have a combination of bolts. There's some smaller 14 head bolts, two of them on the bottom. And then we got a bunch of 17 head bolts on the top. And before we actually push the transmission all the way up, we have to get at the bolts that are at the top. There's two on the very top and then 
Um, there's one on the upper side here that attaches right there to that bracket that you can see. So, and then luckily on the other side, they flipped it around right here. So you can see on this side, they put it backwards so you can get to it with, uh, with a ratchet there. But otherwise you're gonna have to use this long series of extensions to get up back here and to get to the top bolts and you gotta be back here with your ratchet. So we're gonna go ahead and play this game for a sec, tighten those and um, then we'll move on. Okay, bolts are all tight. Now we gotta deal with this wiring harness. Really, what is it? Four plugs, so it's not that bad. And one of them is actually the secondary O2 that would go in the catalytic converter, which we don't have the exhaust installed yet, so we don't have to worry about that one. But we'll hang the harness, and we're also gonna mount our slave cylinder. So we'll put our slave onto our clutch fork and get everything bolted up. And I guess honestly, we can probably swing this up and put these bolts in so we don't have to have this in our way. So probably what we'll do next, we'll pump up this uh, transmission jack and fire in these bolts and get, uh, get underway here. Okay, so transmission's up. We got the transmission mount connected. Right now we have this tripod and we're just cranked it up so that the subframe is coming back up. And we're gonna retighten all the bolts now. We have to reinsert these middle ones also. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten those up so that our subframe is back tight. And then we can continue with uh, some of that stuff on the transmission. So subframe bolts are all tight now. And since I got my buddy Devin hey -yo. <laughs> helping me and it's pretty late at night, we're gonna throw on the exhaust just now. So that way he can give me a hand lifting this up because that thing's heavy. I know a lot of people are probably gonna say why you're running the stock heavy exhaust, but uh, I just don't want any trouble with noise regulations. So we're gonna put the stock one on and I don't know, maybe we'll, if we end up dedicating this thing 100% to track later, then we might go with something different, but for now, we're just gonna throw this stock heavy. I think this thing weighs, what, like 60 pounds or something, right? It's heavy, so it is pretty heavy. I mean, we could do weight reduction, put something else on, but we'll toss it on for now. I just work here. Exhaust is on, and just side note, the hangers for an AP2 exhaust are different than AP1. You can see it's meant for a triangle one, and we only have these single hanger ones. It is still centered, believe it or not, but Definitely not the right hanger. So we have it all hung, you know, hangers front and back. And then there's one in the middle here. And now we are just waiting to put on the header. So probably gonna grab that header over there, throw it on. And that's pretty much the only connection. I threw the slave on, I connected the rest of the sensors. There's only like three of them really, apart from the secondary O2. So if I throw the header on, we can pretty much go up top and, and finish buttoning it up. Actually, sorry, spoke too soon. Throw the header on, and we also have to throw the drive shaft on too. There we go with the drive shaft, and I did show this in a previous video, but I ended up getting upgraded hardware, and the reason because these OEM Honda bolts are notorious for stripping, as you can see. Uh, a lot of them were already kind of rounded out, but I managed to get them out, fortunately. Drive shaft now tight with those new bolts, and we got some other stuff. The shift boot up here, we have to put in those four bolts that you can see missing there. They're just 10 mil head bolts. We also have to replace these ones on the AC compressor, along with that bolt, which goes over here. So we're gonna remount the AC compressor and put back on our steering linkage. So those things have to happen, and we can move up top. All right, so we got those bolts in up here. We got our AC compressor all in and tight, and we got the steering linkage all installed. So let's put this thing on the ground. So here we are, car is on the ground. We're gonna go ahead and put on all the 12 mil nuts that hold the header on. So let's go ahead and tighten those. Header bolts are now all tight. And last but certainly not least, we have to 
tighten that top starter bolt. So we have a series of extensions running through 14 mil to the top starter bolts. I try to show you, but honestly, you really can't see much, but it is just going along on that angle with some uh, wobble joints and it, it gets back there. So we're on it. I've hand tightened it. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. We can swing back our alternator, put the top bolt back on the alternator and get the serpentine belt back on. Air intake is all now on, as well as the serpentine belt, and we connected all the hoses. The only thing left right now is to put the shifter in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that shifter in, which is over here. I am gonna grease it up. So you can use a high temp grease on this, get it all greased up, and then throw those three bolts in, and we'll have a shifter. So she's all greased up with some high temp grease, and we're gonna shove this thing in there and bolt it up, just three bolts, nothing too crazy. So the shifter is in, but I just realized I'm missing something. Let me get rid of this beeping. Is there's a spring that goes in underneath this to kind of keep the neutral lockout. Like see how this just falls down. So this, when I got the car in my possession, the shifter was removed and there's a big spring that holds this up. Because what that does is if you guys have driven a, a manual before, you'll know that you have to push down to get to go all the way over to go in reverse. And you can see, I don't have to push down. I can just put it all the way over to go in reverse. And if I hold it up, that's six gear. So we need that spring to be in there, but at the same time, we can go ahead and start this baby up. So let's go ahead and start it. Push to start.